Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call this meeting of the Brick Township Council to order. Adequate notice of this meeting was provided and published in the Asbury Park Press and the Ocean Star on February 8, 2019. Copies of the agenda were provided to the newspaper, posted on public bulletin boards and the township website. Thank you. At this time, please silence or turn off your cell phone. Madam uh, Clerk, roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Here. Councilwoman Pontarero. Here. Councilwoman DeYoung. Here. Councilman Mumalo. Here. Councilman Halloran. Here. Vice President Crate. Here. President Zapsik. Here. Thank you. Would everyone please rise for a salute to the flag and a moment of silence? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, approve the minutes of March 12th and the March 26th meeting. We have a motion and a second. I'll make that motion. Second. Motion by Councilman Mumolo, seconded by Councilwoman DeYoung. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Abstain. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Cree. Yes. President Zapsik. Yes. Thank you. We have two presentations this evening. Um, I would like to invite Councilwoman DeYoung to the podium with Mayor Ducey and um, ask Virginia Reddig, who is the um, Wildlife Refuge Manager, to please come forward.
Thank you. <clears throat> and tonight we also have our students of the month. Uh, would Council Vice President Crate join the mayor at the podium, please? Good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Each month, the Mayor and Council likes to take a moment to congratulate and honor the students of the month for both Brick Township High School and Brick Memorial. And we um, are going to call up each of those students so that they can be honored. So from the Brick Township High School, for grade nine, we have Samantha Colon. Uh, Colon? I don't know if that's correct. I'm sorry. Colon. 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 For grade 10, we have Joseph Cambria. Come on down. For grade 11, we have Bradley Hines. And for grade 12, Caius Osman. And for Brick Memorial High School, we have for grade nine, Gianna Battaglia and Emily LaFrance. For grade 10, we have Vincent Santanello and Amber Bates. For grade 11, we have Evelyn Vass and Justin Tchaikovsky. And for grade 12, we have Haley Dietz and Matthew Farnkopf. We are now moving on to our municipal budget hearing, item 4-1, Madam Clerk. Authorized reading of budget by short title. Yes. I have a motion and a second. <laughs> you can Wait a minute. Motion. <laughs> motion by Councilman Mumolo. Second. <laughs> second by Councilwoman DeYoung. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Cree. Yes. President Zapsik. Yes. Thank you. I will now entertain a motion to suspend the regular order of business to accommodate the budget hearing. I'll make a motion to suspend the regular order of business for the budget hearing. Second the motion. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. President Zapsik. Yes. Thank you. 
Council President, this is the time fixed for the public hearing on the 2019 municipal budget. The budget was introduced by the governing body on March 26, 2019 and was advertised in the Asbury Park Press and the Ocean Star on March 29, 2019, together with the notice of hearing for April 30th, 2019 at this time. Thank you. Anyone who has not secured a copy of the budget may do so now. They're on the back of the room on the table. This year's budget totals $104,245,623, an increase of $1,166,818 in the tax levy, which equals just under a penny on the tax rate. This equates to an increase in the municipal taxes of approximately $2,647 for the year for the average assessed home in brick of $294,000. This year's budget uses $8,546,711 in surplus as revenue. It leaves a balance of over $9.8 Every year we stress how important it is to have a healthy surplus balance. A healthy surplus balance shows the fiscal health of the community. It is not a savings account that should be dipped into to offset the amount raised by taxes. It is a part of the budget that requires replenishment which is why fiscally sound municipalities like Brick Township apply no more than half toward the budget. The more we deplete, the more we need to raise in next year's budget. This year we experienced an increase in the cost of gasoline, pension contributions, and in the salary and wage budget for dispatch, emergency medical services, and police. All of these services are 24-7 operations, and when we experience vacancies, we often need to fill the shifts on overtime and that creates unanticipated increases. Before opening the public hearing, I wish to outline the procedure. Each person desiring to be heard will raise their hand, wait to be recognized, and come forward to the microphone, give his or her name and address for the record. I will recognize one speaker at a time. Please address all questions to the chair. Where necessary, they will be referred to individual members of the governing, governing body or municipal officers. Questions must be confined solely to the municipal budget before us. School or county matters are not proper subjects of this hearing and cannot be discussed or answered tonight. Who would like to be heard on the budget? Mr. Sluka. Uh, good evening. John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, I sent you guys a note so you sort of have an idea what I'm going to talk about, all related to this budget. Uh, first of all, the main thing is I understand from the last meeting, we're getting all this millions of dollars back, $5 million from the food town site, the site down the block here, and all the stuff. We're also getting money back from that lady who uh, stole some money, and we'll get some of that back this year. So I know we don't have the money on hand, and I know you can't put it in this budget. You know, so it's easy to understand that because it's anticipated, not money on hand. But with all this in mind, I believe the township will get over $5 million in total, and probably by the end of this year, and it's not going to be in this budget. Let me ask the mayor and the council to commit to not spending any of that money once that money is collected during the next nine months. It'll be used as either a special rebate assessment, reverse fees assessment, or at least a guarantee that next year's budget will decrease by that five, six, seven, eight million dollars that we do collect, which will lower everybody's taxes. Uh, the other thing on the budget that I saw, uh, you know, and most, it looked like most of the, so that's one area. The other one was the department head. It seemed like they did a pretty good job curtailing a lot of the spending, but some of the things got me a little confused, and I mentioned some of it in previous meetings. One was, we reduced something that was $100,000, and we only spent 37000 and now we're going back up to 75000 possible spending. And we said, why is that happening? And we hear, well, because we just don't know. Okay, another presenter stated that there's a little double counting, and they understand there is double counting, because we have money that's being spent by somebody, and we're anticipating a higher re but in our budget, we're showing that we have the hiree and we have that outside agency, AMI or whatever the letters were. Okay. Uh, 
another presenter said something to the effect of, geez, I know it's not exactly the right thing, but I don't want to come back to the council and beg for money. Now, if I recall that it's done more than once, and since this happened at least three times in total, uh, that's sort of where I have the problem on this budget. Uh, I think the council really works for the taxpayers and not department heads. So the excesses that are in this budget should be stripped out. They shouldn't be counted at all. Uh, the department heads should not be afraid to come back before the council because if they have really legitimate questions or have legitimately spent the money that whatever that amount happened to be, if they were going to get that 35000 and found out it was 80000 we'll come back to the council who works for the taxpayers and say, look, I really need the money and I legitimately are going to ask you and I tell you why. Because I know if I have money sitting around my house, which doesn't happen too often, the same thing happens. I have a tendency to spend up to what I have. So if you guys don't give that extra money in the budget and make them come back to it, it's sort of like in my household budget, I do the same thing. I have to start thinking what I'm doing right and wrong, and sometimes I have to manipulate the money and let it come down for where it's a few, you know, not spend it today, spend it a week from now, whatever it happens to be. So that's part of my thing. But basically I gave an example, like if I went to a restaurant and I knew the check was going to be up to $100 and it was somebody else's money, I could spend that pretty easily. Now if the checks, I have $50, well I could spend a 50 pretty easily, but I'm going to worry about a little bit more about that second 50. So that's my concern with this budget. I think there's some excesses in it. And I'd like to guarantee for next year that this excess money that we can't put in the budget for this year will be put in, into our rebate or whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it. Or tax percentage lower or cents lower or whatever it is for next year. Okay, thank you. 950 Sylvia Court, if I didn't say it. Thank Council you. President, I'd like to answer some of his questions. You want me to stand there? Yeah, you can oh. stand there. Sure, this is a budget year. You want, you want to get all the answers. Yeah. Well, I as, I, as I said at the last meeting, um, the town had a $5 million loan from Sandy, but the $5 million loan was forgiven. But $3.1 million and a little bit more, I'm going real close to it, was saved to pay that $5 million. 1.5 million, so we've got $3.1 million. 1.5 million did go into the budget. The rest, the mayor used to pay down the debt. So he used 1.6. We need 1.1. We could have put almost 500,000 to pay down the debt and put 1.1 towards the taxes and we wouldn't have to pay, we'd be at zero. But everybody has a different way of doing things. When the mayor ran the last time for election, he lowered it by half a percent but then it went up to 1.9 the year after. So when you take away, you gotta make it back up. Here we got free money. We got a loan that was forgiven. And not only that, like you said, the food town site, it may not come into effect this year when the place is sold, but next year it will. So you are correct. So we could have had a zero rate increase this year. The only people that can change it right now is this council. That's it. The mayor can't, he doesn't vote on it. He only um, presents his, that's and I, I totally agree with you. If yeah. we had that money and stay and paying down 1.1 extra on the debt, which is going to be pennies, that we could do this today at zero. Yeah, and I understand that. I mean, to me, it's you know, taxpayers you, you, need to give it from one place, you take it from another, and stuff like that. You're not. Just, you had extra money. It wasn't. This is extra. But money. Uh, to me, I just find there's stuff in this budget that you could get it down to zero, but even you, without doing that. With doing that, you could actually give more money back. Uh, I just think this budget's a little overblown, and especially that we know that stuff's coming back. I know the lawyer said last time that, you know, we don't want to use the money, or we can't use it because we don't have it on hand. Once we have it on hand, I don't want it spent. I want it to give back to the, like I said, tax rebate. I mean, it's easy to get an assessment. Would you take it a zero rate increase this year? I'll take a zero there rate increase. Go. I'll take a zero increase for the next done. five years. <laughs> it can I don't care when it's done. zero. <laughs> Lower the better. Okay, thank you. Ms. Carl. Nan Carl, 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. I know at least one person in this room noticed my a unusual absence from the last meeting and kind enough to inquire. 
also mentioned that there were others. I want to extend the appreciation for that thought and the call. But it also means that for six weeks, my brain has been off duty. Not AWOL, just off duty. So I don't really know what went on at the last meeting. And my mind traveled. I'd like you to reaffirm for me, did you say nothing about the school taxes will be discussed? That's correct. So nothing about the school taxes is involved here. If you've quoted a definite rate for what we're going to be paying as taxpayers at BRIC, you are not including the school taxes. That's correct. But when we get our tax bill, will it not contain the school taxes? Yes, it will. It will. And yet we can't discuss that. And you have the audacity, and I refer to the entire governance of BRIC, to continue to use this meeting to support somebody and elevate their consciousness in the minds of the people by having a student of the month award without any information why that student was given it and we pay those taxes for the school. We pay them whether you talk about it or you don't. I find that absolutely a smack in the face of the brick citizens and taxpayers which isn't unusual. There's a lot of people finding that from what I'm reading in Patch in just the last week. Uh, for now, I'm going to let it go with that. Thank you. Anyone else on the municipal budget? <coughs> Seeing none, I will close the public hearing. Uh, Madam Clerk, roll call, please. Can we get a motion and a second? Oh, I'm sorry, motion and, a, uh, motion and a second to close the public hearing. Motion to close the hearing. Second. Sorry, now second. <laughs> motion by Councilwoman Ponterero, second by Councilwoman, uh, Council Vice President Crate. Um, roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Councilwoman De Young. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Um, Mumalo. <laughs> yes. Sorry. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. President Zapsek. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Council, uh, Madam President, uh, I have a resolution to present at this time amending the 2019 municipal budget. Thank you, Councilman Halloran. This amendment allows for the inclusion of three grants which we have received since the budget was introduced. The Township Clerk will now read this resolution. Thank you. Whereas the local municipal budget for the year 2019 was approved on the 26th day of March 2019, and whereas the public hearing of said budget has been held as advertised, and whereas the Township Council of the Township of Brick desires to amend the introduced and approved budget, and now therefore be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, that the following amendments to the approved 2019 budget be made. Summary of current fund section of approved budget. General Appropriation 4. Appropriations excluded from CAPS, A, Municipal Purposes, Items H2, Sheet 28, NJS 40A, colon 4-453 as amended, from $18,939,033.46 to $19,352,288.46. Total general appropriations excluded from CAPS, item O, sheet 29. From eighteen million nine hundred thirty nine thousand thirty three dollars and forty six cents to nineteen million three hundred fifty two thousand two hundred eighty eight dollars and forty six cents. Total general general appropriations item nine, sheet twenty nine. From one hundred and three million eight hundred thirty two thousand three hundred sixty eight dollars and forty one cents to one hundred four million two hundred forty five thousand six hundred twenty three dollars and forty one cents. Five, less anticipated revenues other than current property tax, item five, sheet 11, surplus miscellaneous revenues and receipts from delinquent taxes from $30,050,199.95 to $30,463,454.95. General revenues, one, surplus anticipated, total surplus um, from $8,573,806.69 
$146,711.79. Total surplus anticipated from $8,573,806.69 to $8,546,711.79. Three, miscellaneous revenues, section E. Special items of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, additional revenue offset with appropriations, NJS 40A colon 4-453H. EMS services from $1,975,000 to $2,2094.90. Total section E, special item of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, additional revenues. From $1,975,000 to $2,094.90. Three, miscellaneous revenue, section F. Special items of revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues offset with appropriations. Distracted driving crackdown grant from zero to $55,500. NJDOT Laurel Horse Project from zero to $367,755. Ocean County Pump Out Bill from zero to $40,000. Total Section F, special item of general revenue anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues from $838,020 to $1,251,255.20. Summary of revenues, one, surplus anticipated, sheet four, number one. From $8,573,806.69 to $8,546,711.79. Three, miscellaneous revenues, total section E, special items of general revenue. Anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Government Services, additional revenues offset with appropriation. From $1,975,000 to $2,2094.90. Total Section F, special item of general revenue, anticipated with prior written consent of the Director of Local Government Services, public and private revenues offset with appropriation. From $838,020 to $1,251,255.20. Total miscellaneous revenues, from $19,176,393.26 to $19,616,743.16. Subtotal general revenues, items 1, 2, 3, and 4, from $30,050,199.95 to $30,463,454.95. Total general revenues, from $103,832,000 $368.41 to $104,245,623.41. General appropriations, A, operations, excluded from caps. Public and private programs offset by revenues. Distracted driver crackdown grant from zero to $5,500. NJ DOT Laurel Hearst Project from zero to $367,755. Ocean County Pump Out Boat from zero to $40,000. Total public and private programs offset by revenues from $994,427.20 to $1,407,682.20. Total operations excluded from CAPS from $3,119,356.10 to $3,532,611.10. Detail, other expenses from $1,395,361.20 to $1,808,616.20. Municipal debt service, excluded from CAPS. Payment of bond principal, from $10,405,806.98 to $10,406,834.20. Interest on bonds from $3,543,670 to $3,542,642.78. H2, total general appropriations. For municipal pur purposes excluded from CAPS. 
from $18,939,033.46 to $19,352,288.46. O, total of general, general appropriations excluded from CAPS from $18,939,033.46 to $19,352,288.46. L, subtotal general appropriations, items H1 and O from $98,596,248.62 to $99,009,503.62. Nine, total general appropriations, from $103,832,368.41 to $104,245,623.41. Summary of appropriations, A, operations excluded from CAPS, Public and private programs offset by revenues from $994,427.20 to $1,407,682.20. Total operations excluded from CAPS from $3,119,356.10 to $3,532,611.10. Total general appropriations from $103,832.00 $368.41 to $104,245,623.41. Municipal Open Space Trust Fund, dedicated revenues from trust fund, amount to be raised by taxation from $1,034,813.02 to $1,033,785.80. Total trust revenue from $1,034,813 dollars and two cents to one million thirty three thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars and eighty cents debt services payment of bond principal from six hundred ninety nine thousand one hundred ninety three dollars and two cents to six hundred ninety eight thousand one hundred sixty five dollars and eighty cents total trust fund appropriations from one million thirty four thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars and two cents to one million thirty three thousand seven hundred eighty five dollars and eighty cents be it further resolved that two certified copies of this resolution will be filed with the Office of the Director of Local Government Services for certification for the 2019 budget so amended. Be it further resolved that a copy of the resolution will be forwarded to the Business Administrator, Chief Finance Officer, and Purchasing Agent. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll move the adoption of the resolution. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'll move the adoption of the resolution. I will second. Thank you. Open to public. Close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Uh, before I cast my vote. Oh, no. This is just on the revision. I know that. Okay. This is, this is, this is part of it. Before I cast my vote, we as the council have the power to change the budget to a zero rate for relief of the taxpayers of Brick Township. Everyone <laughs> should recall that I expressed my concerns at the last council meeting by using a portion of the money that was earmarked to repay the $5 million loan the town borrowed when Superstorm Sandy hit. We can make that happen. $3.1 million was saved to pay back the loan, which was in fact forgiven. Rather than using the money saved to pay down the debt, as the mayor has done, I implore my council colleagues to take the portion needed to obtain a zero rate increase for this year. Now, as I explained before, there's $3.1 million. 1.5 was used in the budget already. 1.6 went to pay down debt. We could take 1.1 of that to get a zero rate and take the remainder, almost 500,000, and pay down 500,000 on the debt. This way it gives a little tax relief because you know the school's going to hit us with, with money. So that'll give a little relief to the taxpayers here. And uh, I would ask this council to, uh, I'd like to make a motion to uh, put the $1.1 million um, into the budget instead of paying down the debts for a zero rate increase. Can I get a second? Council President, can you ask for a second? Would anyone like to second the motion? Okay, thank you. I'll get my vote is no.
it's a vote Council on the budget Hunter amendment. Arrow. This is a vote on the budget amendment. Yes. Councilwoman Dio. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Cree. Yes. President Zapsit. Yes. Thank you. Okay. The resolution to amend the budget is adopted. Before we move on to the adoption of the budget, uh, we have our CFO and um, our uh, financial consultant with us this evening. And I actually have some questions about the surplus and the revenue that goes in to the budget. Um, we all got a copy of this budget document about two weeks ago. And I spent some time going over it. And I spent some time talking with our CFO. And I just want to understand a couple of things that are on here. Um, we had during our budget hearings, we heard from the department heads on the expense side. But there's two sides to the budget. There's the expense side and the revenue side. So really, my questions tonight are on the, on the revenue side. So on page four, I'm sorry, sheet four. These are the current fund anticipated revenues. Now we've already covered the fact that if you have a revenue, you can't anticipate a revenue in the current budget that you didn't have in the past budget, which is why we can't, even though we know we're going to sell the food town property, why we can't anticipate the additional $5 million into this budget. But on sheet four, um, there's all the, there's a, a list of revenues, and it says what we anticipated in the 2018 budget and what we realized in cash in the 2018 budget. So keeping in mind that we can't put any more in the 2019 budget than we actually realized in cash in 2018, my question is municipal court costs. We anticipated last year's, in last year's budget, $695,000 of revenue from the court. That, I'm sure, was based on the 2017 <coughs> revenues. However, what we actually realized in cash was almost $100,000 less. So, um, and that happened in a couple different places in the budget. So, can you tell me what happens in that case when we've anticipated a revenue that we don't receive? Like, how do we make up that, that money in the budget? It would just be a, a net out of, out, of, out of your surplus. That's so another thing. Yes. So it would come out of surplus? Yes. Okay. And if it would be a total, if we don't make, j just hypothetically speaking, if we don't make any revenue that we anticipated, we would have to then um, put that into next year's budget, correct, uh, Auditor? Well, you'd end up with, uh, we would end up with, uh, so, well, that's about $2 million, I believe, your miscellaneous revenues. So you'd end up with just $2 million less than surplus. Right. Okay. Right. So, thank you for that. Okay. So then the other question that I had relative to the budget and the surplus is, um, you were kind enough to provide me with a debt history um, and a surplus history going back to the um, early 90s. And on this document, on the surplus history, we can see each year what we started at the beginning of the year with, how much was utilized in the budget, and then what was left. So I noticed that starting in about 2000, well, 2013, um, and um, there were years when we used more surplus and there were years when we didn't, okay? But in, two, I'm sorry, 2003, mm -hmm. our bond rating was at the highest. Correct. That. So the bond rating actually, when we have to borrow money for heavy equipment and construction costs and that kind of thing, that's the, that pretty much dictates the interest <coughs> that we're going to pay on those bonds, okay? So um, then we started using almost all of our surplus in, um, into the municipal budget. In 2004, we had 11 million in surplus. We started the year, we used 10 million of it in surplus, yes. 10 million of it into the budget and left a balance of 1 million. Yes. 
Um, now, surplus does replenish, but the more you use, the less you start out the next year with. Am I correct, correct. on that? Okay. So the following year, in 2005, we only started the year with nine million. Yes. And we used almost nine million. We left less than a million, six hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars. Now the following year, we were lucky. We we started the year with ten million. Again, we used almost uh, over nine million, left a million in. The following year, we had a good year. So we must have sold property or something in 07 because we had 17 million in, in surplus. We used 14 million. Um, that left three million. The next year we only re we only had 12 million in surplus. So just because we started the year before with 17 million doesn't mean we were going to put back 17 million. No. Although those things all fluctuate. Correct. So we used almost all of it. We left $61,000 in surplus that you year. You almost used 100%. You used 99.49% 99, 99, uh, of your surplus. I'm sorry. You used 99.49% of your surplus. Yes. No, almost yes. 100%, yes. And that year, our bond rating dropped. Correct. Which meant that when we borrowed money for capital projects, we paid a much higher Correct. interest rate. Okay. The following year, after we all virtually wiped the surplus out, we were only back at six million, which was half of what we had the year before. And again, we used almost all of it. The following year, we were back to eight million at the start of the year. We used almost all of it. We left less than fifty thousand dollars in surplus. Two thousand and eleven, it was only six million at the start of the year. Correct. We used four million of it. We left two thousand uh, two million. The following year, we started with eight million. We used five million and left three million, and that was the year that Sandy hit. So we really had very little in reserves when Sandy hit. So my point is, I'm not going to go through year by year, but since 2013, the surplus has been increasing to a healthy amount. We started in 2013 with 13 million. We used half. Following year, 14 million, we used half. The following year, 16 million, we used half. The following year, 19 million, we used half. 2017, 21 million, we used half. 2018, 21 million, we used half. But 2019, we're only starting this year with $18 million. Correct. So we didn't replace no, we did not. all of what we used last year. Um, our bond rating did come back up somewhat. No, no. Am I right? Yes, it came yes. up in 2011. In 2011, it came yes. back up. So we're in fairly good fiscal health. But my point is that all of these things work together. Surplus is not something that just automatically replenishes itself. You have a situation where you anticipate revenues that don't happen, and that money has to come from somewhere. The other thing is on the debt history, um, the in those years where we were wiping out surplus, we doubled our debt. So in any given year, would it be fair to say that we usually um, retire about a million to a million and a half in debt on, on, on average? Yes. Typically? Yes. Okay. So we not only, so that, that, that was, we doubled the debt. So that was a net doubling. So in 2003, our debt, 2002, the debt was, we were carrying $60 million. In 2011, it was $123 million. So in those years, we were retiring about a million to a million and a half a year, plus we added another $60,000. Mm -hmm. That figures into the debt service calculation that's going to be in this, in this budget, correct? Yes. So there are ramifications for not paying down the debt. Yes, there correct? is. Yes, correct? Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I understood all that, because it's, you Those got it, things correct. are all interrelated. Very good, and, yeah. And Council President, may I say, are you through? I'd like to say something to you. Sure. Thank you. In 2012, Dow borrowed $33 million. In what did they use that money 2012, for? 2012, I didn't hear, what did you say? 2012. 33. Right? What, what I didn't was hear that? what you said, I'm sorry. The solar field. The solar field, okay. Borrowed, the town borrowed 33, put themselves in debt with $33 million. They borrowed the money. We're responsible for that if that person doesn't pay the debt. We put ourselves out because they want to make a half percent. I voted against that. We put ourselves in debt. Who does that? 
who put themselves in debt by $33 million at that, 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 that time. Well, that's come, that, that, that played a big part in what's going on today. None of us were here at that time. Mayor Ducey was. He voted for it. Well, also, Councilman Fosman, what you're referring to on sheet 10 of the budget as revenue, they give us that money. I understand so that. You do understand but the that. town okay. is responsible the for it. The town is responsible That's forever. right. And we took the loan out for it. That's what I'm saying. We did. But I just so want when to make we go to borrow money, what happens? They still look at what we borrowed. They don't. They don't. I just want people to. I would just want yeah. people to know. I mean that we do not pay for that, and that is on sheet ten of the budget. We they give us money to pay for that debt. But that, we, but we're still responsible for that money, and that does affect our debt rating. Or doesn't affect us at all. What do you? So if we but they were we were in debt twenty million dollars, and now we're fifty three million dollars in debt. And now every year we're going to borrow money. Does that does not affect it? Just because you're paying down that debt, doesn't that, that debt incurred? Well, the more debt you have, it would negatively affect you, yes. Yes. That's what I'm saying. So we, what you're saying is incorrect then, because that much money was borrowed, plus what was already owed before the 33 Nobody was borrowed. Nobody is disputing the amount of money that, that was borrowed. We're talking about the fact that while that borrowing was going on, the surplus was being depleted and to almost nothing. You weren't nothing, here when that we vote came. The, higher interest the mayor was and voted were... for thirty-three million dollars, so the town what you would said was be correct, in effect. Council President, yes. Okay, I'm sorry. What you said was correct, Council President. Yes. Thank you. Anyone else from Council? I have a quick question. Yes, Councilman Yeah. Mo, if we had. If we took all of that Sandy money, which thank you so much for getting the debt and everything forgiven, it was a huge effort on your part and we thank you so much for that. But if we took that money, would it be fiscally responsible for us and for years to come, looking ahead at our budgets and what our town will be needing, would it be fiscally prudent for us to do what Councilman Fosman said? When you say fiscally responsible, I mean, I was you the capital surplus. It's not $5 million. The $5 million was the CDL. Yeah. So it's not like we had $5 million. Yes. And no, I mean, I, I even discussed this with Chuck. Um, you would, half of it was used. And to go into your surplus, like to just use it willy nilly, is no, not fiscally responsible at all for the township to do that. Can I ask you a question? Did you earmark $3.1 million for this? Did you have a side to pay this loan before you know it was forgiven? Did you have money set aside? No, I did not. You didn't? No. So, so you weren't planning. You, if you didn't get the, you're telling me that you didn't plan ahead to pay the $5 million down if we didn't get this forgiven? How were you going to pay them back? First of Borrow all, another Councilman five Fosman, to pay that five? I did not go out to get this CDL. Let's point, you know, make that, put that out there. Then why did the mayor and say it was $3.1 million there? Uh, and 1.5 was fixed. And, and by the way, I called Chuck Fallon up. I asked Chuck to call you because of, because of what was going on. Chuck got the money for Belmar in another town. I called up Mr. Fallon. I, made him, I asked him to call you to help us because we already failed the application for the $5 million the first time. And I was told you only get two chances. We got something from FEMA saying that it was incorrectly done. Exactly. That's what Chuck did two of them for no, other towns. Councilman I know. Fosman, no. No. Yes, yes. No. Let no. her speak. A lot has been, has been done prior to, and Chuck did do a wonderful job. I know he he did. helped a lot, but a lot was done prior to Chuck helping. And we, like I was trying to say to you, we got something from FEMA saying that they looked at our records incorrectly, not just ours, other townships. So what they did was they reanalyzed it by what was priorly given to them. I know the application is very difficult to fill out. I spoke to Chuck about it. He told me it was very, very difficult to fill out. And he did two other towns. That's when I read that article that he did two other towns, I immediately called him up. I used Chuck was underwater authority with me. And he does a great job over there. And uh, that's what occurred. And um, debt is debt. 33 million on top of what you had already, it's debt. Still got to pay it. Did they welch? The other company's supposed to pay, but anything could happen.
I just want to be clear on this capital surplus. This is not like the general surplus. This Correct. Is They're two separate. Surplus that we had money we have already borrowed that we're already paying debt service on. Yes. Okay. I just want to be clear on that. It's kind of like when you use one credit card to pay off another credit card. Right. And if you have some capital surplus, it would be best used to pay down more debt rather than use it for any other purpose. Uh, or you could use it for future capital projects. Thank you. Council President, i got one more question. Yes, Council When Mayor Ducey gave his introduction, he said that he used the remainder of the $3.1 million that was set aside. If you go back and read, uh, listen to that, that was set aside. I came to your office. 1.5 you used into the budget. You said the remainder was used to pay down debt. Mm -hmm. Right? But if you could, if you, if we're so worried about having uh, money, the ten million dollars in town, why would you pay debt? Why wouldn't you just put it into surplus? Paying down debt is also. But you're stressing yourself. You're under ten million dollars already. You could have put that in, so we would have extra money instead of paying down that debt. At the, you Councilman Fosman, if you're going to ask her a question, let her answer the question. Otherwise, you're just making a statement, and you can save that for your council comments. Anyone else? All right. May I have a motion to adopt the budget? After listening to all the comments and carefully consider them, I'm making a motion to adopt this budget. A second. Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. No. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. President Zapsit. Yes. Thank you. All right. We're on to the consent agenda. All matters listed under item consent agenda will be enacted by one motion in the form listed below. If discussion is desired on any item, this item will be removed from the consent agenda and will be considered separately. Thank you. Resolution 5-1. Recognize 80th anniversary of Edwin B. Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. Councilwoman Dio. Yes, thank you. This resolution recognizes the 80th anniversary of the Edwin B. Forsyth National Wildlife Refuge. Thank you. Item 5-2. Authorize receipt of bids Greenbrier 1 Roadway Improvements, Markham and Whittam Streets. Thank you. Mayor Ducey. Thank you. Uh, this um, resolution authorizes the division of purchasing and contracting to go out to bid for Greenbrier 1 Roadway Improvements from Markham and Whitman Streets. And then there's alter alternates in there of Kinsley Court, Vaughn Court, and Bryant Road. And then hopefully alternate Bs, which is Holmes Court and Poe Road. So a bunch of different roads in uh, Greenbrier 1. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5-3. Authorize receipt of bids, Whitman Street, Phase 2, Culvert and Embankment Repairs. Thank you. Mayor Ducey. Uh, also in Greenbrier, uh, Whitman Street, the resolution authorizes the division of purchasing and contracting to go out to bid for Whitman Street. It's phase two of the culvert and embankment uh, repairs that are necessary. Thanks. Thank you. Item 4-4, four, four, uh, I'm sorry, 5-4. Authorize award of bid purchase and delivery of 150-foot steel monopole for police operations at 301 Brick Boulevard. Thank you. Councilwoman Pontereau. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> This resolution authorizes the award of bid for the purchase and delivery of 150-foot monopole to Sabra Industries in Sioux City, Iowa, for a total bid amount of $41,070. Bid notices were mailed to four prospective bidders and two picked up bid packages. One bid was received. The contract includes design, manufacture, and delivery of all parts and mounts related to the 150-foot communications tower delivered to the Drum Point Sports Complex, as well as concrete foundation design for said tower. The township will identify a state contract vendor to build up the foundation once the design is complete. Soil testing was needed to confirm the foundation and the amounts. The project is funded through the 2017 capital budget. Thank you. Item 5-5. Authorize award of bid manufacturing and printing of tax bills. 
Thank you. This resolution authorizes the award of bid for the manufacture and printing of tax bills to Vital Communications in Trenton. This is a two-year contract, not to exceed $24,500 per year. Bid notices were mailed to 25 prospective bidders and six picked up packages. One bid was received. Vital Communications has prepared and printed tax bills for the 2016, <coughs> 17, and 18 tax year. Item 5-6. Authorize award of bid and authorize rebid Summerfest food truck vendors. Thank you. Councilman Halloran, please. Thank you, Council President. This resolution awards a bid for Summerfest food truck vendors in six categories. Delano Food Service, Long Valley, with a bid amount of $750 for pizza. Tony's Italian Sausage in Hazlitt, with a bid amount of $1,802 for hot food, including sausage and cheesesteak. John and Debbie O's, Tom's River, with a bid amount of $1,618 for grilled fried items. You Scream Ice Cream in Brick, with a bid amount of $1,750 for ice cream. Shore Fresh Catering in Manchester, with a bid amount of $1,300 for miscellaneous snacks. John and Debbie O's in Tom's River, with a bid amount of $1,223 for miscellaneous snacks. A notice to bidders was placed in the Asbury Park Press on the Township web website. In addition, 93 bidders were notified from our bidders list, of which 14 potential bidders requested bid packages. Eight bids were received. The township established a minimum bid of $750 per category. This resolution also authorizes the rebid for the remaining two categories to include category four for deli, which includes salad, subs, sandwiches, tacos, and wraps, and category six, which is specialty. Thank, Thank you. you. Item five seven. Authorize award of bid, beer and wine garden concession. Thank you. Councilman Mumolo, please. Thank you, Council President. Resolution authorizes the award of bid for beer and wine concession to Three Boys Corporation, otherwise known as Windward Tavern, Princeton Avenue and Brick, in the amount of $5,650. There was an established minimum bid rate of $5,600 to provide uh, this service at four Summerfest events and the Fall Fest event. The notice to bidders was mailed to 25 potential bidders. Three bidders requested a bid package, and one bid was received. Thank you. Thank you. Item 5-8. Authorize award of bid, mobile ice cream truck. Council Vice President Crate. Yes, this resolution authorizes the award of bid for an ice cream truck vendor to Cool Concessions Brick in the amount of $1,255. The township established a minimum bid of $500 for exclusive rights to both locations, including Windward Beach and Traders Cove, or $250 for either location. In this contract, the vendor agrees to visit each park daily from Memorial Day to Labor Day. A notice to bidders was placed in the Asbury Park Press and on the township website. In addition, 93 bidders were notified from our bidders list, of which four potential bidders requested bid packages. Thank you. Item 5-9. Authorized sale of surplus property solar renewal, renewable energy certificates, SRECs, and Class 1 renewable energy certificates, RECs, fleetchange.com auction. Thank you. Councilwoman Dio. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the sale of the Township Solar Renewable Energy Credits and Class 1 Renewable Energy Certificates through a public auction. The Township of Brick intends to utilize the online auction services of Flat Exchange LLC. At this time, there are 115 solar renewable energy certificates from the Township's rooftop and parking lot solar panels to auction on the Flat Exchange website. In addition, there is eight Class I renewable energy certificates from the wind turbine located at Drum Point Sports Complex. In February of 2018, the township utilized Flood Exchange LLC for the sale of the solar renewable energy certificates through public auction and received $35,872.50. And I would just like to thank Mr. Chekai, who is here tonight, who always keeps on top and make sure that we are doing our due diligence in getting our SRECs. So thank you, Bob. Thank you. <laughs> Item 510. 
Authorized Sale of Surplus Property Public Works Vehicles Auction 2019-2. Thank you. Council Vice President Crate. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the sale of surplus property for a variety of public works vehicles no longer needed for public use. For this auction, we will utilize the services of U.S. Gov bid. The New Jersey Department of Community Affairs has approved this company as a provider of online auction service for the sale of surplus property. The last auction sale, D DPW vehicles netted $242,653 in proceeds. Thank you. Item 511. Authorized sale of surplus property, police and forfeited vehicles, auction 2019-3. Thank you. Councilwoman Pontarero, please. Thank you, Madam President. This resolution authorizes the sale of surplus property for a variety of police and forfeited vehicles. For this auction, we're also utilizing the services of U.S. Gov bid. The New Jersey Department of Community Affairs has approved this company as a provider of online auction services for the sale of surplus property. The last auction sale for forfeiture vehicles netted $19,976. Thank you. <laughs> Item 512. Authorized rebid fireworks <coughs> exhibitions. Councilman Halloran, please. Thank you, Council President. Uh, this resolution authorizes the rebid for fireworks exhibition. A notice to bidders was placed in the Asbury Park Press and posted on the township website. In addition, nine bidders were notified from our bidders list and five bidders picked up bid packages. At the appointed date and time, no bids were received. Thank you. Item 513. Authorized rebid Fall Fest food vendor concession. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the rebid for Fall Fest food vendor concession. Mm -hmm. A notice to bidders was placed in the Asbury Park Press and on the township website. In addition, 10 bidders were notified from our bidders list and eight bidders picked up packages. At the appointed date and time, no bids were received. Item 514. Authorized change order number one, final roadway improvements to Laurel Crest. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the final change order in the roadway improvements to the Laurel Crest project. The change order represents a decrease in the overall amount of the contract awarded to MECO Inc. by $28,736.76. Item 515, please. Authorize award of bid CDBG Rehabilitation Housing Program Project Number 18-01. Thank you. Council Vice President Crate. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the award of bid for Community Development Block Grant Housing Rehabilitation Program to David Clark Construction Bayville for a total bid amount of $14,300. Bid notices were sent to 40 prospective bidders from our bidders list, of which seven bidders picked up bid packages. Two bids were received, with David Clark Construction being the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. Thank you. Item five, uh, 516, please. Authorize award of bid CDBG Rehabilitation Housing Program Project 18-07. Thank you. Council, uh, Councilwoman DeYoung. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the award of bid for Community Development Block Grant Housing Rehabilitation Program to David Clark Construction of Bayville for a total amount of $16,100. Bid notices were sent to 40 prospective bidders from our bidders list, of which seven bidders picked up bid packages. Three bids were received, with David Clark Construction being the lowest responsible, responsive responsible bidder. Thank you. Tongue twister. <laughs> <coughs> Item 517. Authorize award of bid CDBG Rehabilitation Housing Program Project 18-10. Thank you. Councilman Halloran, please. Thank you, Council President. This resolution authorizes the award of bid for Community Development Block Grant Housing Rehabilitation Program to Premier Property Management Services, Beachwood, for a total bid amount of $22,010. Bid notices were sent to 40 prospective bidders from our bidders list of which seven bidders picked up bid packages. Two bids were received with Premier Property Management Services being the lowest responsive, responsible bidder. Thank you. Item 518. Authorized placement of tax liens for property cleanups. Thank you. This resolution authorizes the placement of a tax lien for property cleanup at 1666 Route 88 Block 1170.01, Lot 2, in the amount of $1,263.97. $1 Item 
Item 519, please. Authorize special events permit, pet adoption day. Thank you. Council Vice President Crate. Yes, this resolution authorizes a special event permit for a pet adoption day event on Saturday, May 18th, between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. at St. Raphael's Church on Route 88 West. A rain date has been set for June 1st. Thank you. Item 520. Authorize special events permit fishing tournament. Councilman Mamalo, please. Thank you. The resolution authorizes a special events permit for a fishing tournament event on Friday, June 14th, between the hours of 5.30 p.m. and 9 p.m. at Whirlin Brothers Marina on Princeton Avenue. Thank you. Item 521. Performance bond release for BTEC LLC on Route 70 and Forge Pond Road in the amount of $39,731.11. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Item 22, tax collector, Mrs. Bergen. Thank you. 22A or tax overpayments for 2019, block 134, lot 15, in the amount of $106.24. 22B is a redemption of a tax sale for certificate at block 340, lot 52.03. Thank you. That ends the consent agenda. I will open to council. I have some questions. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Uh, the sale of the renewable energy certificates, um, when we receive the money, where does the money go? goes into our uh, budget for utility bills. This year? Yeah. Into 2019. And same with the surplus from public works vehicles, because they said over $200,000 was made last year, and that goes in there also? Uh, and, and the police and forfeiture the police force goes, goes in there also? Separate, the police forfeiture goes into a separate forfeiture account that's uh, mandated to be used only for specific purposes and needs approval from the Ocean County Prosecutor to use. Okay, thank you. Anyone else from council? Oh, sorry, I've got one more. Yes, I've got sir. One more here. Um, um, when we bid out the Summerfest food truck vendors, um, how come we're not including the Fall Fest food vendor? Um, why can't we combine them two to do one bid? And maybe everybody would be interested in it. Um, well, we we do them differently. Um, we tried doing Fall Fest the way that we do Summer Fest when we first started doing Fall Fest, which was individual trucks and the township coordinating, and it just, it just didn't stick. It wasn't until we got a particular vendor who would do all of the due diligence with assuring a certain number of, of trucks. When we did it piecemeal, we would get one, two, three, but we really, that's a food truck event. So we wanted to have a minimum number of, of trucks Really, the, the food trucks are the focus of that event, where Summerfest are an enhancement to a different event. Mm -hmm. um, and we found that one vendor who had the relationships with the, the various trucks was a better way to go for fall Because I, because I just read, read about Tom's River, they're having a boat boat thing down there, and they got like 60 vendors down there. You know, I don't know if they're all food vendors, but they got 60 vendors. That's quite a bit for a thing. I, I just thought it'd be easier to get more people. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Seeing none, may I have a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Motion by Council Vice President Great, seconded by Councilwoman DeYoung. Open to public for questions on the resolutions. Mr. Sluka. Uh, John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, Mr. Finelli is not here, unfortunately. Uh, just so everybody knows, the Board of Ed meeting is this Thursday in the Brick High School because it's budget related as well. So people who want to see the budget or get involved in that one, go over there. There's usually four people at the wall talking. And these people really spend a lot of time, obviously. When I'm there watching them, I'm amazed how much knowledge they have. But it's good to be there. The other one I have a question on is consent. The police need a 15-story high pole for $41,000. What is that? It's for the telecommunication system. 15 so stories high? It's got to be able to reach. That's a satellite? Yeah, well, not really, but it's got to be able to reach out to the barrier island. Oh, so it goes that way, okay. It just I went, wow, that's 15 stories high. We don't have a building in brick that's, you know. Okay, and the other one was, um, these ice cream truck things, I mean, Mr. Finelli always asks about mo when it has to do with money. I, I didn't quite get the dates when you said. Uh, I think 
Hold on, I'll go back. Dates the dates for the, the dates ice when cream you're truck? doing this bidding for this ice cream truck thing. Like Just when the ice cream truck, be? right? Is what you're asking about? Uh huh. Uh, Memorial Day to Labor Day, the one that goes. Oh, the ice cream truck. Yeah. yeah, Memorial Day to Labor okay. Day. What happens to the ice cream trucks that go there now? They don't have to do anything. They just come in and go and stay and That's make money. That's correct. We we only regulate it during the summer months because oh. one we want to have ice cream available. It gets hot at the marina. It gets hot at Windward. Kids want a treat. Um, so we would like to have the trucks come in regularly with soft drinks and cold, and especially. And ice you regulate cream. it that way. Um, and the problem we were experiencing was, you know, the trucks would compete with one another, and they would kind of get into negative exchanges and then avoid the area. So this was a nice, clean way for us to be sure that the kids were going to be offered ice cream every day, and the families would have access to. Okay, ice cream. I'm only noticing this year because of. Again, we had all sorts of problems, I understand, from it, the Easter vacations and stuff like that with different things going on. And uh, they had a couple ice cream trucks down there at one time and the, and they can, at Wynwood Beach. When it's a nice warm day, they, I know they the just, ice cream trucks So they can come in and out, is weekend. what you're they saying. Okay, without a, that's why I was wondering whether it was, whether it was something more than that. Okay, uh, I think that might be it because I don't study it as well as those guys. But I think we're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Ms. Call. Van Call, 18 Green Briar Boulevard. Uh, the first thing I want to mention is a point of order. No discussion to, should take place at all until you have a motion and a second. And the motion and the second does not mean that a vote will take uh, place in an agreed upon. Right now, this should have been moved and seconded before any council member said anything on these items, which would have definitely been before we could. Check it out in your rules of order. Um, earlier in the meeting, Mr. Fosman asked somebody to second a motion he made. I'm not sure that people understand. If anybody seconded it, it only meant it opened it to discussion. Discussion we all should be able to hear what each person's thoughts. I find it very confusing to understand how a group of seven people know how to vote without having had a, dis a public discussion, which it should be. Speaking of public, is there any reason why, when you had multiple bidders by the date requested, you didn't mention who the other bidders were and what their bids were? That's just part of the public information we should be entitled to hear. I find it confusing, and I'll make it a rhetorical question. Perhaps in time you'll learn how we should be doing these things. Uh, there were several things, and I didn't really write down which one, that the bids weren't submitted by the date specified. So now what ha I, I don't remember which ones they are, and I didn't have enough energy to mark down which ones. What happens now on those particular ones? They mostly concerned, I believe, Summerfest. They go out to bid again. They're going to go out to bid again where there were bids picked up but not remitted. And you think you're going to get somewhere with another bid. Uh, I personally don't see how. Um, I'm not sure there was something else. The uh, the 150 foot, it does say steel monopole for police operations, and I make it a practice to never assume, occasionally presume, that that sounds like to me, who worked in the field of data communications and other telecommunications, that that is a pole that acts as an antenna for just police communications. Is that correct, as opposed to the uh, antennas that serve multi-purposes? Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? 
seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crete. Yes. President Zapsik. Yes. Thank you. Item 523. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Computer bill resolution in the amount of $22,022,503.37. Thank you. Open to council. Yes, I have a few questions. Um, on page 7, um, it says Brick Board of Education. Uh, um, it's for $10,000. It's on 4519, but it says 2018's Summerfest transportation. Uh, are we paying last year's bills on 2019's money or they just sent us those bills on four five nineteen as it says so we're using 19's money to pay 18's bills it comes from the recreation rider where the money was still in from last year uh, the 2019 budget also includes deferred charges which are prior year bills because we do also get a lot of municipal services act um, invoices in late from communities so our, our budget typically includes deferred charges which are prior year bills thank you um, page eight and nine i guess it continues over to nine um, Bright View engineering a traffic study on route 88 and uh, jack martin boulevard we're paying for that. I thought that was 88th State Highway and Jack Martin's a county road. This traffic study. Yeah, there's a telephone pole that's uh, on Route 88 that if people are making a left coming from here, let's say, let people are making a left onto Jack Martin, um, you can't pass on the right because there's a telephone pole that's in the way. So our residents have asked for that telephone pole to be moved back so that um, we're able to, they're able to pass people. You can see a bunch of chunks taken out of the telephone pole for people who've hit it in the past. <laughs> I know they're very expensive. They're like $50,000 just to move a pole. And uh, couldn't the state or the county take to such a state highway? Couldn't the they chip in and help us or well, anybody we, look into that? Or? We did. We, we, we tried. Did. They we, said no. Uh, yeah, that when they told us the first step for us would be to provide them with data, that would be more compelling than us saying, hey, our residents are asking for this. And if we provided a traffic study that gave them the data that would further justify the request that they would reconsider their participation. So that's why we're going through the study. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, page, page nine, another one. Um, um, Michael Capco, he works at BMAC. He works at uh, RW, RWJ Barnabas. And I know Andrea, you work there. Does Andrea have to abstain on that bill because he she works with that person? I, I'm I'm trying to understand what you're you're. Well, she asking. she works at the same place, the hospital that he works at. She oh. gets the same pay from the same place. No, the fact that they're both employed well, by there. the large employer doesn't mean that she's conflicted out. No. Okay, thank you. And number 34, page 34. Um, it says solar redevelopment project, $8,900. $8,986 for professional services. Um, what Bauman and Scott and McMahon, what professional services did they do? There, there are redevelopment council. In that particular project they're working on, they build it to the solar um, redevelopment project. It, what happened with the, the State Division of Taxation actually raised a, a potentially significant liability issue for the township. Um, the division was uh, seeking sales tax payment by the township for uh, sale of the solar energy. And we believed uh, that that was not required because we're a public entity. McMenamin and Scotland Bauman have people who are um, skilled in that. They uh, dealt with the Division of Taxation, and, and I'm, I'm pleased to report that they 
convinced the division that there is not sales tax and that bill is is sort of um, is, is that the only bill we receive from them for this eight thousand nine hundred and ninety it's the only one to my knowledge I, yes I don't see any more here I just, I just noticed that that just came up for the yeah for the solar project, project. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. I don't know if we spent any more money on it, is it or is this it? No, it was. It wasn't on the project generally. I, they just built it to that account, but it was for that particular sales yeah. tax issue that was very. That was last month. They had to deal with it, and they um, convinced the division that we were not subject to that tax. So it was a sort of relief from a significant potential liability on our part, on the township's part. Thank you. Um, page forty-five. Uh, preferred behavioral health thrive program um, I don't know what the thrive program is I can answer that question that's one of okay. our BMAC programs that's the mentoring program we run at the Maple Leaf complex okay thank you that's from the municipal alliance grant also so that's grant funded not taxpayer funded okay I didn't know what the thrive program was um, page 51 um, it's, uh, it's electric it says solar production sixty nine thousand thirteen dollars um, is that is that what we pay them for our electric for the solar field that is okay is that average I didn't, I didn't see last month so I can look I got the paper yeah. You have the paperwork on yeah. So, so we're paying probably about nine hundred thousand dollars to the solar field for electric. That's okay. Um, one more. On page twenty three. Um, it says Board of Ed Gas Gates Capital. Um, I, I don't know what that is. It says Building and Ground Improvements for the Board of Education. So um, we have um, had experienced significant issues uh, accessing the gas pumps across the street, for which is generally used by all of our police vehicles and our township fleet, as opposed to the one at DPW, which really just services the DPW um, fleet. Um, we opted to talk to the Board of Education about the township replacing those gates and that we would then hold the responsibility of the vendor and access. Uh, a lot of our problems occurred off hours in the evening and weekends and we were not able to get in touch with someone to resolve them. So by taking on the responsibility of changing the gates, the uh, system is tied to the township and the vendor is our contractor and we have access to that person 24 7 so we no longer have access problems getting to the fuel and is this the only bill for there is there any other monies paid out to them besides this I'd have to check the capital budget to see how much was allocated last year for this project and that would be the amount that we fully expect to spend I don't have last year's capital with me is, is it, yes is it's this, definitely more than eight hundred dollars yeah uh, yes is it, so we're gonna we're gonna pay for that so we can have access to the gas 24 7 24 7 and the contract so we drove the process on the type of gates we needed to see we drove the process on how they would work and how our officers would access that that was also a problem codes would change systems would change we wouldn't be notified um, so we are taking control of all that by replacing the gates okay thank you You're I'll, welcome. I'll, I'll, uh, I w I'd like to know what the total cost was I can certainly get that for you right, thank you that's all I have thank you council thank president you. any other questions from council a motion and a second motion. second a motion by councilman Mumolo seconded by councilwoman de young open to the public for questions on the bill resolution seeing none close public roll call please councilman Frosman yes councilwoman Pontarero yes councilwoman de young abstain CME yes to the rest councilman Mumolo Abstain Meridian Occupational Health, yes to the rest. Councilman Halloran. Yes. 
Vice President Crate. Yes. President Zapsek. Yes. Thank you. Item 524. Be it resolved by the Township Council of the Township of Brick that the following bills be paid and that the Mayor and Clerk be and are hereby authorized to draw orders on the Treasurer for the amounts of the same. Manual bill resolution in the amount of $1,644,911.23. Thank you. Open to Council. Seeing none, close Council. Motion in the second place. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Pontarero, seconded by Councilman Halloran, open to public for questions on the manual bill resolution. Seeing none, close public. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. Yes. Councilwoman Pontarero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Abstain CME. Yes to the rest. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. President Zapsik. Yes. Thank you. Item six, ordinance says on first reading. There's no public hearing on first reading. Madam Clerk. Amend chapter 288, parking restrictions at Traders Co Co Cove playground parking lot. Thank you. An ordinance of the Township of Brick, County of Ocean, State of New Jersey, amending the Township Code of the Township of Brick to extend the restrictions on parking in the playground parking lot at Traders Cove through the summer months. Thank you. This ordinance reestablishes a two-hour parking restriction in the playground parking lot at Traders Cove that will be in effect from May 15th to September 15th between the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. This is being done to ensure that the parking lot is being used only for the facilities and amenities of Traders Cove. The parking restriction signs installed last year are currently covered and will remain covered until this ordinance takes effect. No violations will be issued until after the ordinance goes into effect. I have a motion and a second. Motion. Second. Motion by Councilwoman Pontarero, second by Councilman Mumolo. Open to Council. Yes, Council President. Yes, Council. I'd uh, have you have somebody ride out there and cover those signs. Pardon me? The, some of the signs aren't covered out of Trader's Cove. I don't know. Some are, some aren't. Somebody must have ripped them I know down. that the Recreation Department went out and covered them all, so... I was out there and they were all... Oh, no, I went out they were all covered. Okay, because I so was out there about maybe three... Maybe the wind we had... May, it possible. I'm time. just letting you know. He'll check it. As of yesterday, the, the no doctor has to confirm that they were covered, but we, he did was, agree uh, that... Uh, probably a week ago or so, I was Yeah, he needs to, they do need to be checked regularly because of wind and Yeah, but I'm not, that down, probably so happened. I know some of them were covered. Only like one or two or three or something. We'll stay on top of this morning around 10. They were all covered. Um, this two-hour parking, this is, this is the time when uh, the people use the playground from May 15th to September 15th, and we're going to limit two-hour parking for the people to play at the playground. I voted against this the last time. Um, we have 70 parking places there. 70. People are worried about other people parking there. I mean, there's plenty of parking. There's no need to restrict any parking for anybody going there. If you go to your family, we're going to mark the tires with chalk and then come back two hours later and say, hey, you didn't move your car, you're going to get a ticket. How do you enforce this? It's, 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 it's just ridiculous. It's just to pass, pass an ordinance. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. That's all I have to say. Uh, anyone else from council? Yep. Roll call, please. Councilman Fosman. No. Councilwoman Ponterero. Yes. Councilwoman DeYoung. Yes. Councilman Mumolo. Yes. Councilman Halloran. Yes. Vice President Crate. Yes. <coughs> President Zapsek. Yes. Thank you. Alrighty, we are now at public comment. Please note that each person addressing the council during any section of the meeting during which public comment is permitted shall limit his or her remarks to five minutes pursuant to Brick Township Administrative Code Section 2-33B. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Who would like to speak? Mr. Sluka? I feel like I'm overdoing it. But uh, uh, John Sluka, 950 Sylvia Court. Uh, just a reminder, I know I talked to Mr. Finelity about a week ago, and he mentioned about the meeting with people talking in gestures and stuff like that on a dais and in the audience. Uh, just a reminder that we've got to avoid some of that stuff. Uh, you could look on the film instead of me saying anything. 
Okay. Okay. Here's my letter dated April 10th, which is, like I said, April 10th? Yeah. Uh, Mayor Ducey, uh, Council President Andy Zapsik, Councilmen and Councilwomen, plus all the people in Brick and Ocean County. Uh, I was so glad to hear that Councilman Fosman sent a letter to Powers and Trenton in support of a pollution wall for Evergreenwood residents. I was also glad to hear the mayor spoke to aides of the governor and the head of state of the state senate at the meeting in Mercer County where he urged the governor to come to Brick and view, smell, and hear the results of the devastation, the pollution, and the noise of the Garden State Parkway on the surrounding communities. I'm hoping later to hear more about the count from Council Fosman and Mayor Ducey on the results of their communications, just maybe by working together, not as Republican and Democrats, but brick residents and their representatives, we can get something done for the people you represent. I once said that I wish we didn't have political parties in brick, so people who sought office would do so to help the citizens and not their own prestige or be, be responsible only to political parties. A high wall and replanting of brush and trees are needed in the Garden State Parkway adjacent to Evergreen Woods, Brick High, Primrose Garden, Sutton Village, Greenbrier, Town Hall, Birchwood Park, and many, many other areas in Brick and Ocean County to correct some of the damage that was caused by the illicit and illegal actions of the New Jersey Turnpike Commissioners. Unfortunately, the wheels of government move slowly and often too slowly, but we must remain strong and adamant about what is truly needed to save the lives of our seniors and the health of our children. If you live or work near the Garden State Parkway, you are at risk. Some taxpayers, paid employees of the township, the county, the state, may want to bury their heads in the sand and not seek the truth about the toxins killing our seniors, harming our children, and hurting the development of babies yet to be born and mothers to be. But instead of criticizing residents, they should go to the hospitals, the libraries, the newspapers in order to seek the truth. The Board of Education stated that we have 1,830 special needs children out of 8,500 in our school system, about 22%. Does anyone truly believe we are all just having abnormal pregnancies and the environment has no impact? There have been many studies brought before this council and the commissioners and the county politicians, the newspapers and local leaders, uh, but little gets done and it, is, it does become disheartening. Some may want to believe that the truth, that want to believe the truth, but they will not investigate for themselves. They will not ask the hospitals, medical doctors, and nurses. They will not ask the head librarian for help in finding studies on highway pollution, asthma, autism, and COPD. Some may be afraid of the truth and would rather have a false sense of security in the belief that they cannot be harmed by the toxins from autos and trucks, but they are only fooling themselves. Some may believe the bureaucrats of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority or the powerful people who profiteer at the expense of the health of tens of thousands of Ocean County residents, but we all should investigate for ourselves. I urge every citizen to go to the hospitals, ask the doctors and nurses if toxins are at least in part responsible for asthma, autism, COPD, and premature deaths. I urge every citizen to go to the library, spend some time on their computers <coughs> to see the highway traffic pollutions are at least partially responsible for the high rate of autism in our school children and COPD of our seniors. The time for action is now. And we all must add some grease to the slow moving wheels associated with government. With the last few seconds, let me thank Councilwoman Pantarero for bringing attention to the cancer risk and the awareness that should be taken by dentists. My dentist has been spending a minute almost every six months, I go looking at my tongue and gums, my children's tongues and gums, and many others for the past 20 years. That one minute exam may take her a little time, cost her a little money, but she does this for each patient, but it saves lives, and in one case, it absolutely did, because she caught it before the, uh, they, even the doctors knew it. Uh, so at least that is satisfying <coughs> to her. Okay, with the holy days upon us, I sent the letter to Lord early in hopes that we all take the time to reflect on ways where we all can do our part in helping others. All in all, let me thank, again, thank Councilman and the Mayor for making their attempt to get the Governor to stop the abuse of the New Jersey Turnpike Authority. I'm going to drop a, council, a copy with, the, with our uh, Secretary. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Checker. Bob Checkeye, 127 Royal Drive. Um, I just 
I'd just like to go over a few things with the French's landfill. Um, we have a 15-year contract with them. The reason for that is, um, in order to build it, they needed a lot of money, obviously. The town could have borrowed money and built it, but that would have been a lot, a lot costlier. So the town issued the bonds to them, and they pay back the bonds, or are supposed to pay back the bonds. The, um, got a brain fart. <laughs> All right, so in 15 years, we own that. The reason they went with 15 years was because after 15 years, you don't collect any SREX. So they got the SREX money, and they got a good deal to, to fund the thing, to build it. Okay, so um, when we own it in 15 years, our electric bills, which according to this paper in 2018 was one million dollars and in 2019 was 835 our elect those electric bills will go to half because if you look at your electric bill half of the bill is delivery charge half of the bill is for the electricity you're not going to be paying for the electricity so right there you're saving hundreds of thousands of dollars when that happens also, when, when they signed a contract uh, up front, they gave the town $2.5 million. That was rent. They have to pay rent for that property. And if they built it bigger than they first said they would, then um, they would have to pay more. They did build it bigger. They're also paying us, uh, it's a little over $60,000, I don't remember the exact figure, a year rent. So we got $2.5 million up front. And we're getting over sixty thousand dollars a year rent, and we're going to own the thing. Now, a lot of people say, "Oh, great! Fifteen years, they're probably going to fall apart." And to those people, I tell them, "We have satellites that have been out there over thirty years, and their solar panels are still working, or we wouldn't be able to talk to them." So I just wanted to bring that up. I think it was a pretty good deal uh, when we we're talking about pollution. It eliminated a lot of pollution. As far as the solar on top of this building, if you look at how much SREX it's made and how much electricity it has saved, it has paid for itself. So for the next approximately seven years that we're going to be collecting SREX and free electricity from this one. So solar is a money maker. Um, I just want to bring that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Carrie Maloney, 850 Marlboro Ave. Um, I just want to bring up the fact of how gross our parks and beaches have become with the amount of garbage recently. I took my daughter to Winwood Park last weekend, last Tuesday. I couldn't find the parks. There was so much garbage everywhere. And it's not just Winwood, it's all the, all the parks in this town. We have spent a lot of money recently reviving everything. I just want to know what what steps are we going to be able to take to be able to clean up our parks? There was children spitting all over the equipment. I couldn't get near it. I couldn't even find the playground equipment because of the amount of children on it. It was completely disgusting. And I have now been sick for almost two weeks because of this. People were just urinating everywhere, bathing in the beach water, spitting on everything. It was completely disgusting. I have pictures of proof. I have other people with pictures of proof. We can sit there and we can find people all day for loitering and littering, but if they're going to sit there and spit on the ground and throw their garbage on the ground, how is that going to help us? How are we going to be able to sit there and ensure that our children are going to be safe at our parks and our beaches? This is my, I can't take my six-month-old daughter to a park because it's disgusting. What, what can we do? What other actions can we take? I mean, there's a brand new park down the street. I'm scared to take my daughter there now because of how disgusting it may be from other people just completely destroying it. What actions can we now take to ensure that this is not going to happen? Um, <sighs> our parks department goes out on a regular basis and cleans, correct? Yes, yeah, so we have one employee uh, that is, does nothing but do the routes of all the parks every day and 
many of you know him, he takes great pride in uh, the efforts that he does uh, as the big show. And <laughs> his sole responsibility is to clean the parks and he routes them every day. So, but we can't, uh, also can't have somebody at each park all day, every day to pick up things that people neglect to pick up after themselves. So we do put effort into park maintenance. Our parks department takes great pride in the maintenance of our parks. I guess the second prong in that answer, uh, Councilman Zaxson, for me would be the um, park security that we have in place. And it's a seasonal um, role that we uh, created. And we have a retired uh, police officer that goes to all of our parks every day. Uh, he has been sworn in as a special police officer, so he can uh, write tickets for violations. So not only is he uh, preemptive in uh, talking with people and reminding them of the ordinance, but he's also uh, proactive in addressing problems. So we you know, have a, a layered approach to keeping our parks safe and clean um, and do the best that we can to ensure that they remain safe and clean. So I have two questions. Um, one is the, the, the parks maintenance employee. Mm -hmm. Does he visit every park every day or is he on a schedule? Like no, he goes to every park every day. Every park every day, okay. And the second question that I have is we're looking to put on an additional park security person, I understand? Yes, we are. And we're very hopeful that that will happen in short order. So we would have uh, the, the one person that we have can't work seven days, seven nights a week and the weekend. So between the two of them, we hope to have um, five nights a week and both weekend days covered all throughout the summer. Okay. And I lied, I actually have a third question. So we normally, in the busiest seasons of the year, we normally have a parks maintenance crew in some of our larger We parks, have park correct? maintenance crews at Wimward and uh, Traders <laughs> Cove. And when, when does that, when will that start? Generally after school, after the school ends. Okay. Uh, we do have them that started already on the weekends in both of those locations, but once school ends, then we have somebody there uh, every weekday and on the weekends. I'm sorry, but that, how is that going to help us right now if there's one, literally two people for eight parks? I mean, if, have you gone there recently to any of these parks? Yes, I take my grandchildren to all of our parks. I, I can't go. It's disgusting. The amount of people that are there on a daily basis right now, it's absurd. And I'm not sure if you saw any of the pictures of what happened at Mariner's Cove Park last week with children playing on top of the gazebo elderly gentleman holding a kid up on a bike over a fence. If that child would have fell, the amount of damage that would have been done, people would have been suing our town. We would have no town. How are we going to ensure that this is never going to happen again? That's the point I'm trying to get across right now. These parks are disgusting. We can't go. And the amount of people that are coming in and leaving their trash during Summerfest, this doesn't happen. It's off season because there's not enough people to stand there and regulate this on a daily basis. How can we help fix this problem? Thank you. Yes. Oh, Ms. Call, I'm sorry, I couldn't see your hand. Greenbrier, oh, Nan or Ren, both of them apply. 18 Greenbrier Boulevard. Uh, so much to cover, so little time allotted. And I have no respect anymore for our town, our state, our federal government. And I wonder why this government exists. What is your purpose? What are you supposed to be doing? When I came here, you'll notice that this agenda says caucus slash public meeting. I've mentioned it before, and I'm going to keep mentioning it more and more. When I came here, it was Mayor Scarpelli. And I don't give him credit for too much, but I do give him credit for listening to the people and allotting as much time as was needed for the people to talk. We had a caucus meeting one week, the public voting meeting the next week. We discussed everything on the agenda that would be voted on in depth, but we also got out things that were bothering us, like reading what's going on in the Twitter war and going on between mayors and statements. The first one, Twitter, that I read started the whole thing. Actually, it was filled with inaccuracies. 
but the response to it was totally unbelievable. I would expect an attorney and the mayor to have better comprehension of the use of interpersonal relationships and what to do for the people. We need to have a caucus meeting every other week, four weeks, four weeks in the month, caucus, public, caucus, public, and at that caucus meeting, we need people to be able to come and say what the young woman before me said, what's going on. Now, maybe somebody else will contradict what she says. The business in the Twitter, as I said, the first statement cited two specific Jewish sects, and it probably was neither one that applied. The person who said that didn't know what they were talking about. But you're never going to know that unless we have an open dialogue. We need a dialogue between the state, the county, and surrounding towns. We need to have a larger group and meet. At least once a month, we should be discussing it. It is ridiculous at this point to have roads come under different agencies. Let's have one entity responsible for the roads, but also responsible to us, the people, and to talk to us at a meeting, not just to you, because you're certainly, I've mentioned it before, not one of you represent me. You have done nothing for me. And I've been thinking about this now for a couple of weeks, and the words, number one, of uh, Betty Davis in a film many, many years ago, when I watch a lot of TCM films from the 30s and 40s, and something I love. This wasn't on TCM, but she's famous for what a dump. And that's what Brick has become, is a dump. These malls, nobody has done anything to rehabilitate it. I have no idea what's going on with Food Town and particularly with Jack Morris. Is he going to do something? And if so, when? Or is he going to do what he has done for the past 20 years almost and let it all go to the netherworld? Another thing that came to my mind today, right now, while at the meeting, is a quote actually from the New Testament about rendering unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Well, let's have what belongs in the schools of Brick take place at school meetings and not here. I am so absolutely disgusted. Um, I have one last question that I'd like everybody to answer the next meeting. When there is an ordinance and the township doesn't follow through on the ordinance, to whom do we complain? And please don't tell me uh, about complaining to somebody right here in our own town about the dereliction of duties or mistreatment. We need to have it an outside agency, and we need some mediation for us, the people. Anyone else from the public? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Roxanne Jones of um, West Princeton Avenue. Um, I would like to echo the concerns of the young mother that came up to speak about the condition of our parks. I haven't been to one this year yet, but I remember the last time I went last year going to Windward Beach, beautiful. You know, it's a great place to walk, and last year I went to Trader's Cove off of Maniloking. I took pictures. They hear that these places have become garbage dumps virtually, that they're being littered, and that people are exercising unsanitary behaviors. I think we need more than just two people for the security and the maintenance, respectively. In fact, I thought that we had more people doing maintenance for our parks. You know, tourist season's coming up. 
if the out if the people from out of town see what the things are like here, they may take their um, money to Tom's River. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none, close public. Mrs. Bergen. No comments other than to offer Councilman Halloran a very happy birthday. Mayor, sure, get away. <laughs> Mayor Ducey. Thank you. Um, I just want to say we had the Green Fair. It was a great uh, event. I want to thank uh, all the civic organizations that took place in the schools and our staff. And I just wanted to particularly thank the staff members, um, Ed Maroney, Anne-Marie uh, Dries, uh, Jen Hartman, John Lola, Aaron Salter, Ed Peters, Stephen Saletto, Ken Mathis, Chris Hessenkemper, Madeline Iannarone, Alita Desiderio, Joanne Lambusta, Vinny Valente, Ian Campbell, Thomas Romaine, and uh, Keith Rella, of course, who organized the whole thing. So thank you, everybody, for all your hard work on making that such a successful thing. It coincides with Earth Day, you know, Earth Month, I should say. It's, usually, it's always in April on a Saturday. Um, and there was a lot of, uh, you know, informative uh, things as well as people get, being able to get rid of their electronics, which was big, and uh, being able to purchase things from some of the vendors that are there. Um, we have uh, some upcoming events. So Temple Beth Orr and the Living, Fam Living Faith Bible Church, they're co-hosting a Holocaust Memorial Commemoration. Um, it's going to take place at Temple Beth Orr. It's on this Sunday, May 5th at 4 p.m. And it's open to all faiths. That's why they're co-hosting it. Um, so please uh, come out to that great uh, commemoration of the Holocaust Memorial. That's going to be very touching and a... Uh, appropriate thing uh, due to the, you know, th this uh, week being the uh, Holocaust Memorial Week uh, that was declared by our president. Um, senior Citizen Prom will be held on Friday, May 10th. It's an intergenerational event, meaning it's uh, senior citizens along with seniors and juniors in high school. It's co-hosted by with us uh, here in Brick Township with the Brick Schools. Uh, call Recreation to register, 732-262-1076. And if you've never gone before, it's an excellent event. We have um, a band that plays all sorts of, uh, you know, oldies music, and it's got the whole big horn section, and there's a king and queen and a prom court that are named. Uh, and it's uh, on, and the kids are just the volunteers to help. Uh, they, they're the waiters and the waitresses, and they, uh, cl you know, clean up after the prom and, uh, you know, dance with everybody if they don't have partners. If you do have partners, bring them. Um, next thing is Kids to Parks Day is Saturday, May 18th. Uh, again, you have to register through recreation. This number is 732-262-4622. It starts at 9 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, May 18th. and takes an awesome uh, bus ride to uh, four of our parks uh, to show exactly everybody what's out there. As everybody knows, we've redone uh, almost all of our parks here on the mainland. We have a, you know, a few more to go, one on the Barrier Island and two more pocket parks here. But... Uh, the rest of them are uh, redone, and, and it includes a lunch, and it's a free event. So, uh, you know, kids to Parks Day, come take advantage and just see what awesome amenities we have around town. Um, our farmer's market also begins Saturday, May 18th, and that's 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's every single Saturday beginning May 18th all the way to September. Uh, lastly, I just want to wish all the moms a happy Mother day, Mother's Day, including my wife, Deirdre, uh, who's the mother of my son, Jack and my mom as well. So happy Mother's Day to my both relatives, but every, every mother that's out there. That's obviously Sunday, May 12th, so don't forget to buy uh, your mom's presents. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Starkey. Uh, no Madam Clerk. Nothing. Thank you. Madam Secretary. Nothing. Councilman Fosman. Thank you, Council President. Um, first off, congratulations to all the students of the month. And on April 11th, oh, it was my pleasure to attend the Ocean Medical Center Hackensack Meridian Health uh, of official ribbon cutting ceremony for the think tank it's called the bear's den and uh, this is a room that is dedicated to employees who have ideas and how to improve the care of patients and the operation of the hospital it was very unique they have a computer in there so anybody feels like they can have an idea or anything they just go in there put it on the computer so it's pretty good um, on april 13 i participated in the clean ocean action spring cleanup at brick beach one as I do every year, and um, the cleanup uh, was in partnership with the Hackensack Meridian uh, Health. Uh, following the cleanup, I attended the annual Green Fair held at the Brick High School. The presentations by the children of our schools were amazing. 
Um, it was my honor to attend a brick fall on heroes from the Civil War to Iraq, brick boys who went off to the war and didn't come home. I'd like to thank uh, William Duffy for all his research and the spearheading the brick fall on heroes. The banners were amazing there. When they put them out there on the road, they listed all the heroes uh, that didn't return. And uh, about Trader's Cove, that's all Green Acres. Anybody can go there. It's, it's a public park. Um, limiting the parking there, I think, is ridiculous. And uh, we're trying to get the kids out of the house, not put them back in, you know, so they can get out there. Um, and happy Mother's Day to everybody. And I do have one other thing to say, and it's called Words Matter. Uh, leaders who use pow power of social media to connect with voters do and need to do so much so much with extreme care. Using words to build confidence in government is a way to go. The use of words that incite anger and hate is not in the public's best interest. Inflaming social division makes it difficult for ordinary citizens to figure out what is truly going on. I feel it is important for us to stand up for everyone's values and to share our visions along with the participation in building a better brick. Thank you. Councilwoman Pontreau. Thank you, Madam President. <clears throat> I wanted to point out that on May the 25th at the DPW is the Residential Document Shredding Day. This is an important day. This is a day our residents can come out and have all of their important paperwork shredded at no cost. Please take advantage of that. Also, in connection with that, um, our Senior Services Outreach uh, Center at 373 Adamston Road will be having a scams slash fraud presentation on May the 15th at 10.15 uh, 10 a.m. This program is something that's very much needed at this point in time. Uh, my mother called me about three days ago sobbing because she thought that Social Security was going to be taking away some of her money because a gentleman who identified himself as Mark from Social Security and gave an ID number threatened my mother with incarceration. Um, and there was nothing I could say to her that would relieve her of the complete panic she was in until I actually called Social Security on three-way. If you receive a phone call with someone representing themselves as being from Social Security, if you even respond yes to are you so-and-so, they have you on tape and saying yes to something that you never said yes to. Hang up the phone immediately. You will not be contacted by Social Security other than in written form. So please, this isn't just for seniors, this is for all of us, but especially our most vulnerable seniors who, like my mother, you don't know necessarily in this day and age what's done over the phone, what's done on the computer. I also took the opportunity to wipe through her emails and I found four separate similar scams in her inbox. So this program, <clears throat> It's provided by the Ocean County Consumer Affairs Department. Again, Wednesday, May 15th at 10.15 a.m. Uh, I want to send my deepest condolences to Joanne Bergen on her recent loss and wish a wonderful and happy Mother's Day to my mother and my mother-in-law and all the mother figures in my life. But my thoughts will be particularly with Ms. Bergen on this Mother's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Dio. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I just want to congratulate again the on um, the 80th anniversary of the Forth, Forsyth Wildlife Refuge. Again, <coughs> get out there, just leave your phone at home and just enjoy peace and quiet um, and, ever, and what we have in Brick that we can appreciate. I also want to thank Mo for coming out um, this evening and answering and also attempting to answer um, questions and thank you so much for all of your hard work on our budget this year. You really put together a fiscally conservative budget that we can be proud of um, for our residents and for uh, the future years to come. So again, thank you, Mo. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. 
Councilman Mama. Thank you. Congratulations, students of the month. I'd like to also uh, kudos to uh, Vice President Crate who put together uh, the Fallen Heroes program that took place at uh, Windward Beach. She did a great job. Uh, Councilwoman DeYoung, myself, and Vice President Crate met with the gentleman back, I guess it was over a year ago. And uh, Councilwoman, uh, Vice President Crate took it and ran with it and did a great job. Thank her for that. The Green Fair was a lot of fun. I took my grandkids. I still have a headache from it, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, happy birthday to my favorite councilman, Halloran, sitting next to me. And a happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Thank you. Councilman Halloran. Thank you. Uh, I'm just going to keep it short and sweet. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there and all the mothers who are no longer with us, um, who uh, cared for us dearly and uh, made us what we are. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President. Happy birthday. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to make a few announcements. The first one is I neglected to say at the last council meeting that there is a new set of Take 5 photo contest um, contestants that are now on display out in the hall. Uh, those um, on display are Michael Sales, Carol Granger, and Rita English. So when you, as you enter or exit the building, I invite you to stop by that display so that you can see their photographs that they've taken. I also wanted to thank everyone that came out for the Brick Fallen Heroes ceremony on Saturday, although it was a bit windy. The sun did hold, and it was actually quite a lovely day, especially once we got up to the top of the hill where the banners were on display. It really wasn't too bad up there. Uh, I want to especially thanks Bill, thank Bill Duffy for all of his hard work in doing the research and providing all the information to us so that we could properly, uh, you know, um, honor these fallen heroes in brick. I also want to send some thank yous out to our DPW, Ken Mathis, uh, the men in our sign shop, uh, Rob, Lu uh, Bob Luckowitz, John Costa, and who worked on covering those banners in the high winds and keeping them covered throughout the display so that when we got up to the top of the hill, there was actually something to unveil. Um, Dan Liebenthal, uh, the road crew, Anthony Venturino, Juan Bravo, Kurt Gardner, Alex Hahn, from Parks and Recreation, Dan Santanello and Chris Hessenkemper, they were um, really helpful in getting this entire event together and they were also the ones that came up with the idea for the plaques that are now on the polls as well so that, um, just to be understood, those banners will be up in future years from Memorial Day to Veterans Day, but we're going to take them down in the winter time because obviously the weather is harsher at that point and we really want to keep them well preserved. So at the time when the banners are not on display during the winter months, those plaques will still be affixed to the posts so that there's still an honorarium for those men. Uh, I also wanted to thank John Lola, who was in charge of the sound system. Considering how windy it was, I'm pretty sure everyone could still, he still hear everyone that was up at, this, at the podium. And finally, uh, I just want to take a few minutes. I am always in touch with our public librarian, and so she sent some uh, different activities that are going on at the library that I'd like people to know about. The first one is taking place on Thursday, May 2nd from 6 to 8.15 p.m. It's Stress, Sleep, and Sound with Del uh, Dalian, also known as 13 Hands, a stress-reducing interactive presentation and concert supporting parasympathetic nervous system response sleep, positive mood, and general immunity with Grammy nominee Dalian, also known as 13 Hands. There's also an Alzheimer's workshop series beginning Wednesday, May 15th, and also taking place on May 22nd from 2 to 5 p.m. In partnership with the Alzheimer's Association, this series of programs will focus on the early and middle stages of Alzheimer's and will include resources for caregivers. Also, they're going to have a musical concert, the Blue Suede Quartet, on Saturday, May 4th from 2 to 3 p.m. Enjoy a retro tribute to the rockabilly sounds of Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, and others. And although Earth Day is passed, they do have two events on Thursday, May 2nd from 2 to 3, Jersey Friendly Yards, Landscaping for a Healthier Barnegat Bay. Uh, what we do in our yards has a direct impact on our health and the health of the Barnegat Bay. Learn how to create a beautiful, low-maintenance, bay-friendly landscape using jerseyyards.org. Get inspired by examples of successful Jersey-friendly gardens. And it's presented by the Barnegat Bay Partnership and the Ocean County Soil Conservation District. And finally, 
my favorite subject, uh, that I couldn't get the word right a couple of weeks ago. Monday, May 6th, from 2 to 3 p.m., home composting. Let's get cooking. Gather up the right ingredients and tools and get ready to make something wonderful for your garden and your world. Learn how easy and inexpensive it is to make your own compost. We'll cover the basics of how to build and maintain a compost pile, and topics will include different types of compost bins and the benefits of composting. So uh, I have a compost thing in my yard, and I love it. We just emptied it out, and are, we're ready for gardening. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. Thanks for letting me have a couple of extra minutes tonight, and that's it. Thank you very much. I'd like to congratulate our students of the month and thank them all for coming out this evening. Um, I also want to talk about our, our recreation department. So we have, in addition to um, a number of youth sport, independent youth sports organizations that are very vibrant and robust and offer a lot of great athletic programs to uh, the youth of our town. There are two competitive, pro there's a, well now three because they added wrestling last year, but there are three competitive programs that are actually run in-house by the recreation department. One is the youth wrestling program that we just took on last year. One is the boys and girls softball program that runs from the fall into the, into the winter months. And then we also have a girls softball program. Um, all three of those leagues were actually um, taken over, I don't want to say taken over, they were, they were sort of um, absorbed by the recreation department as the, the efforts were being run privately and the folks that were running it as a private enterprise were really not interested in, in doing it anymore. Um, the oldest of those programs is the girls softball program and Debbie Graham has been running that program first independently and then um, as a recreation department employee for 50 years. She just celebrated her 50th year and she was recognized with a plaque by the recreation department. And I have the pleasure to work with Debbie for many years. I, there is not a, 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 a more fierce advocate for uh, female sports, um, young women in athletics um, in Brick Township that, that I'm aware of. So I would just want to take a moment tonight to congratulate Debbie on 50 years of service and to thank her for serving our, our generations, really, over 50 years, generations of young women um, in girls softball in Brick Township. And that's all I have. Our next meeting will be on Tuesday, May 14th at 7 p.m. The motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Aye.